Hey guys, what's up? Loco here. For you today, I have FlyQuest vs C9. It's the number one LCS team going versus the number two LCS team. And also, there's a lot of storylines at play. C9 is trying to go for that coveted 18 and 0. Mm, maybe they aren't going for it, but it is the talk of the town right now, right? Can they actually achieve 18 and 0? And FlyQuest is a second best team, so if there's a team to stop them, it's going to be FlyQuest. On the other hand, for FlyQuest, they've been a pleasant surprise in the LCS. No one really had them being so high up at number 2, but yeah, they have a really solid read on the meta. They play very cohesive, and Power of Evil and Ignar have been popping off. And I think a really key factor for this game is going to be Power of Evil and Niski. Both players play an incredibly crucial role on their team, although a bit different. Niski likes to get priority and take on 2v2 with Blabber or roam around the map, where Power of Evil on the other hand actually gets his lead in combination with his support Ignar, and then they like to farm up and control dragons and then scale up into team fight. So with that in mind, let's go right into the draft. So the bands coming in from Cloud9 is a little bit weird for me. The Ribbon Band I understand completely, it's versus FlyQuest and Viper, you definitely want to ban that champion, especially on blue side. The Olaf ban is where it gets a little bit weird for me. I don't think Olaf is a core part of the meta, and I think he's only strong when you pair him with Yumi. And Cloud9 ends up banning Yumi anyway, so why not just ban the Yumi and save the Olaf ban for something else? On the FlyQuest end, Aphelios, Orn, Senna, I think these are really great bans. Some people might question the Senna ban, but there's this new strategy called Fasting Senna, where you don't farm on Senna and you actually allow the support to farm early game and you're getting a lot of souls and you're incredibly powerful going into mid game. Cloud9 actually showcased this strategy earlier in LCS last week, so yeah, the Senna ban makes a lot of sense too. Cloud9 leading with Set first pick, one of the stronger champions in the meta, not quite OP but still really good first pick. FlyQuest responding with Aatrox as a counter into Set and also the Varus. I think the Varus pick is really nice, it gives you priority in lane naturally and pairs really well with all the aggressive supports that Ignar likes to play. And also it's a takeaway away from C9, C9 loves running Varus Tom Kench. So C9 adapting with Ezreal into Varus, Ezreal really isn't a winning matchup into Varus. But it gives you a lane that you can just farm it out on and be as strong as Varus mid game or even stronger when you hit your two item power spike. As for the Tom Kench pick, I mean C9 is one of the best Tom Kench teams in LCS. Actually, they are the best Tom Kench team, so makes perfect sense to me. And the normal counters into Tom Kench are enchanter support, and people aren't really playing them, so yeah, it's also uncounterable in a sense in LCS. Now, FlyQuest going with Blitzcrank. I did talk about Enchanters as the normal counter into Tom Kench, but Blitzcrank is one of the champions that can counter Tom Kench as a non-enchanter. You don't really win lane versus Tom Kench, but you can have kill pressure depending on the AD relationship and where your jungler is. And also there's this interaction for Tom Kench, right? Where you want to eat your AD carry as he's getting pulled, but you might mess up and eat the AD carry too early and end up getting grabbed yourself and it becomes a two for one situation. So Blitzcrank into Tom Kent, it's more of a kill pressure, look for angles and good interaction kind of counter pick more so than I'm gonna demolish you in lane. Now, rest of the draft was pretty normal. So let's talk about the overall win condition for both comps. C9 comp is a team fight comp, but it has a little bit different flavors going on. We have Zoe plus Ezreal that makes it a very strong poke comp. These are some of the best poke champions in the meta. They have a lot of strong disengage tools with the Gragas, with the Tom Kench, and there's also avenues of split pushing included in this draft. Set, while not the best split pusher in the world, can definitely split push versus Aatrox depending on how the laning went, and Tom Kench also contributes to the split pushing aspect of the draft with his ultimate, allowing people from mid lane to rotate to side lane very easily. On FlyQuest and very similar to Cloud9, like their primary win condition is going to be team fighting, but there are split pushing flavors included with the Aatrox, but I think the really strong theme coming out of FlyQuest draft for me is pick. The Syndra, the Varus, the Blitz, if they're able to get good vision control on Cloud9 and control the river first, control big objectives, brush it around Baron first, that's going to make it really threatening for Cloud9 to check into the fog because yeah, you don't want to be checking into a Syndra, you don't want to be checking into a Blitz. So a lot of vision game going to be required for FlyQuest to make Cloud9 uncomfortable. Now let's get started with the gameplay. I wish the Observer was showing it, but Niski is going over to place the ward on blue, and he has the blue smite from the random summoner bubbles that he was able to get, and now he's going to come in with his Q and smite and able to steal away the blue buff from Centaurin. This is where Zoe RNG really comes into play. In the early game, you are able to get bubbles randomly in lane, right? You sometimes have it on minions, you sometimes don't, and by getting them, it gives you priority in lane. 
Niski was able to get a proto belt bubble in the earlier parts of the game, so he got priority, and he also got the blue smite, so he was able to make this play. So yeah, I mean, Zoe RNG can be disgusting. Centaurin doesn't have a lot of options here, and he wants the bottom scuttle, but you can see that Niski has a lot of priority, and also the C9 bot lane has priority, so yeah, I think it's going to be really hard for him to fight for this scuttle. There's just no way he can actually get it. And yeah, C9 was a really nice lead thanks to good RNG. I think this was an incredibly silly mistake from Licorice. He should know that Centaurin doesn't have a lot of options, and he had to go for the double golems and a gank on top side. So yeah, he just had to control his wave better. And you can see both Centaurin and Viper using their flashes and trying to get this kill ASAP because they know Niski is going to be roaming and if this kill gets delayed, it can be really bad once it turns into the 2v2. Now, I don't know what Viper is doing here. He's coming in to proc the plant when the rest of his team is all the way across and he also should know that Zoe has priority. So yeah, Blabber going to go in, Niski coming in here, going to flash just to make sure he can get that Q damage. He actually doesn't end up getting the Q damage but the team ends up killing him anyways. But yeah, just silly mistake from Viper. He should know that rest of his team is on bot side and he can't be playing that up in that case. So the sequence of play is gonna start with C9 using Herald on mid lane. Really look at Niski and Vulcan here. So you can see Vulcan maintaining max range of the hook from Ignar. He's in range to eat Niski, but he's not in range to get hooked himself. Niski landing a very nice chunk on Ignar Vulcan eating him right away after he gets stunned. Now Scuttle coming up, that's what FlyQuest is going to focus on. They really want to make sure they get it, because, I mean, Scuttle gives you a lot of the dragon control. And Blabber and Vulcan getting in there, Blabber using Predator. But now you can see that Power of Evil, when he went aggro, Vulcan and Blabber are a lot closer to Power of Evil and Niski than Ignar and Centaurin was, so they're able to chase him down, get this kill right here. Blabber gets hooked, but Vulcan flash eating him. And then using Stopwatch right afterwards as Centaurin's trying to get that Q damage. Zben teleporting in with Ezreal, Ignar trying to block for Centaurin, having to flash out. Just really good play from C9, and this is how FlyQuest was able to build a lot of their leaf versus other teams, right? Ignar and Pyre of Evil and Centaurin working together for that mid 3v3, but C9 is just so good and beating them at their own game, so yeah, FlyQuest slowly falling behind. Now, with the second Herald coming up, both C9 and FlyQuest want to control this area. You can see Niski looking for pokes, actually misses everything. Blaver is going to get grabbed by Ignar, and Centaurin coming in here with WRQQ. Oof, a little bit over eager on his part. Blaver was able to flash away towards his team. Vulcan gave him the Guardian Shield, and Vulcan also could have eaten him if required. I think this is just FlyQuest getting a little bit impatient, and they know they're starting to fall behind, so they're overly playing for things that they know they shouldn't. Centaurin just had no reason to go in there when he realizes, hey, entirety of C9 is right there. Vulcan can eat him anytime. He just really shouldn't have committed with the Q. So we have Cloud Drake up, and both teams want to play for it. You can see Zmen and Turtle recalling and TPing in. Ignar starting with a hook on Vulcan. Vulcan dodging the follow up with Stopwatch. Really good to dodge the Verithal right there. I mean, it's all about skill shots. Whoever hits more skill shots wins right here. Now look at Niski, he's going to look for flash something, looking, looking, flash bubble, Viper is able to dodge out, and then now look at Ignar, he has flash, he's going to look for flash hook, Niski able to dodge, but Vulcan gets pulled in the process, and Viper going to follow up and kill the Zoe. Now it's a 2 for 1 for FlyQuest, and also the Herald randomly got used, really nicely done on their part, finally getting a skirmish win on C9, and also the Herald being completely wasted. I'm pretty sure they should be able to get Drake now. Yeah, it's going to be really hard for C9 to be able to check into this choke. They still have the Syndra with the stun. I mean, Blaver might look for a steal here. He's actually two levels up on Centaurin. Let's see what he does. He's actually going to walk away, don't want to risk it, and FlyQuest smartly pulling at the dragon to reduce the chances of a steal. C9 playing for vision on FlyQuest's red side jungle. They're going to come back mid, try to get priority again. Let's see what FlyQuest does. Ooh, Vulcan actually ends up splitting from rest of his team. He's going to get stunned. Beautiful Insect from Centaurin, and CC locked completely. I'm surprised he didn't use Thick Skin. Oof, the Ezreal barely missing on Centaurin. Blabber wants to get something out of this. And yeah, I think that's going to be it. Nice pick from FlyQuest. So at this point, both teams are fighting for mid priority much as possible. Syndra has Deathcap and Ludens, so she can look for a one-shot on the Ezreal if she's able to land their stun. But she does have to be careful about C9's engage. Blabber coming in here with Predator. 
He could have E-Flashed, but he bluffed it and Power of Evil was forced to burn his Flash. It's a really, really big summoner blown. And now the rest of C9 gonna chase him down. Vulcan leading the charge. He's a Tom Kench with Stone Plate, Nifki, and both Zaben landing very nice pokes. And we're gonna have Licorice flanking. I mean, Set flanking is one of the most dangerous things. He has the unstoppable ult that's able to push people back onto your team. And also, he's really hard to focus down due to the Grit Shield. And yeah, C9 is gonna decimate this fight. Really nicely done from Zbenzen to just stay mid and not get opened on from Power of Evil. And Blabber doing a brilliant engage. He could have E-flashed and gotten the one-shot on Power of Evil, but there is a chance it doesn't work. Power of Evil has cleanse, and also they can interrupt things with the Verisault, the Blitzcrank hook. So he was able to just get the flash, and they just chase down rest of FlyQuest afterward. I mean, this is going to result in Baron, and yeah, this is usually what happens in a C9 game. It's close, it's close. They're slowly winning, and then there's this one big fight, and then the game blows wide open. Ooh, let's see what this actually turns into. C9 hates taking 50-50s at Baron, so they're gonna make sure they don't allow it. Nifki flashing out, that was his fake flash that he picked up earlier. Really nice poke on Pirate Beeble, it's really hard for him to approach now. And yeah, you can see C9 not taking the 50-50, and they're just gonna back up. They will never risk taking the 50-50 if they don't have to. And so well done from Vulcan, he's just holding the eat until the hook comes out. And as Nisky was able to get hooked, he just ate him and cancelled the engage completely. And yeah, C9 not going to take the Baron because they know they don't need to risk this, they're the better team. I mean, let's watch the replay on this again. Just look at Nisky here, Vulcan up front, tanking the damage, Nisky coming in, landing the Q, picked up the flash, flashing over, going to land the W on Blitz. And yeah, and also now look at the set, he can't be focused down. He's also able to carry one member back onto the team. Centaurin gonna get pushed back again. Zaben try to kill him. But yeah, it's Nifki just doing everything from top side of the map. Woof! Zoe is a champion. Once again, we have both teams playing for priority on this side. Power of Evil able to land a nice stun. But FlyQuest not gonna be able to follow up on this. And here comes Blabber and Nifki. Oh my god. That chunk on Turtle, Jesus Christ. I mean, he's going to be out of the fight. Blabber bought time with the Thought Watch, flashing out afterwards. A lot of engage tools used already. And now it's going to be the Zoe Ezreal show. A lot of the engages have already been used, and they don't really feel danger, so they're able to chase down whoever. Fed had a really nice flank also. And yeah, they're able to pick up another dragon, and they might be able to even threaten Baron. C9 is just so good at skirmishing, so good at opening fights. And they know once the cooldowns are done, like, the Ezreal and the Zoe can go crazy. So C9 was able to get the Baron from the earlier play, and they're gonna be seizing. They already have the bot inhibitor done, so they're just having 4-man mid lane with Set joining up. Nifki and Zaben looking for pokes. Zaben eating out as he gets stunned. Nifki looking for bubble. Ooh, he went in, Parb Evil landed the R, and also Centaurin's Q. And yeah, that's Syndra damage right there. He has Death Cap, Ludens, and Void Staff, so the squishy Zoe just gonna go boom. Nonetheless, Cloud9 just reset, and they're playing for this dragon. They're at three dragons right now, so it's soul point for them. If they get this one, they're gonna be able to get the Cloud Soul, and just abusing the hell out of the Zoe range. Fight starting by going on set, that's just not going to work. Yeah, using the ult, the unstoppable, and then the maximized grip shield. He also has stopwatch afterwards. And rest of C9 just going to close in on flight quest. At this point, the game was already over. I think the game was over at the Baron point, and yeah, flight quest just staying in the game because it's LCS and they can't leave. If it was scrims, they would have already left. And much props to C9, they just ran their game again and ran it beautifully and beat FlyQuest at their own game, which is mid-priority by having a strong mid and having the jungle and support play around the mid. Ooh, I think they might go for a fountain dive. Vulcan and Zaben ruining their KDAs and getting that kill and ace on Fire of Evil. FlyQuest really put up a good fight, but Cloud9 is just that much better than them. And this is them playing the second place team in LCS. I really want to give props to Nifki for this game. I remember in the mid-season check-in, I talked about how Pirate of Evil and Nifki have different styles, and you can argue that Pirate of Evil is better at being a carry, 
But this game just showed that it doesn't matter if Hired Evil gets the resource from Ignar, gets the resource from Santorin, Niski was able to dodge out the ganks and just play out the 3v3s better. He was straight up the better player. I don't think there's any questions about who the best mid laner in the league is right now. It is hands down Niski. And also, he is looking to be a really good front runner for MVP. I didn't think he'd have this kind of monster split, especially since he played with Svenskaren last split, who got MVP. There has to be some of the Niski shine being credited to Svenskaren, right? But on the other hand, it actually just looks like the opposite. It looks like a lot of Svenskaren shine is going to be credited to Niski because, yeah, he's playing so damn well. I hope you guys enjoyed this local recap. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And one last thing, I'm not crazy, I'm just local. Bye!